Okay, we're testing the 3000 ES from GrowWatt. It's a 120 volt stackable inverter. There's a tremendous amount of interest from off-gridders. So, you know, this is a really good cabin solution just with either one or two of them. How much can just even one of them do in terms of starting stuff? People are a little skeptical about the capacity of a non-transformer type inverter. You guys saw our review on the transformer type six kilowatt from GrowWatt. And what I have right here is a setup with two inverters and they are series onto a 240 volt breaker panel. And we're gonna do two tests here. One of them we're gonna run an electric dryer and the other one we're gonna to try to max out just one of them on a 120 volt line, feeding this Romex wire that as you can see, feeds a surge arrestor with probably too many things plugged into it. We have plugged in is a 1500 watt ceramic heater. We have a 15 amp uh, chop saw and we have a 15 amp circular saw. And we're gonna try to turn on the base load which should cut half the inverter's capacity right there. And then at the same time, surge it with two 15 amp motors and see if we can't get this thing to triple off. The next test we're gonna do, if you see our battery bank that's feeding this test bench right now, this is the Gil lithium batteries that tend to be very interesting these days for people just because of the cost efficiency. I've got a fully charged, three fully charged packs of 15 kilowatt hours. And what we're gonna to try to do is run a dryer for non-stop for about an hour and a half, two hours, as long as we can until the batteries run out. So you guys kind of get a picture of if you were loading them you know, to the max for a long period of time, if the inverters would overheat or have any kind of problem with that. So just sort of a two-way test on how these work. I'm gonna start with the first test. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on this heater. If we come up and look at the screen, see, I'm gonna turn that heater on to max. And if you look at the screen here, it shows a percentage load. That load's rising, it's at 51% right now, 53%. It's a little over 1500 watts is being pulled. You know, that's a little over 50% of the 3000 watts. Now at the same time, I'm gonna kickstart both of these motors, and this is all on one circuit. Okay. okay, so we're gonna get this going. We've got the heater running right now, and here we go. So what you guys saw there was two of these motors running and two things happened. Number one, even with the base load of 50%, still had the surge power to start two 15 amp motors. Number two, when both of these were running, you saw we were at 108% load. The inverter has about 30 seconds at up to 20% extra load. So it was just clocking itself running an extra 10% there. So even if you're pushing the line, it'll give you a decent amount of leeway to you know, start stuff and, and move on. So I assume like if you were cutting boards for a deck and just taking you know, quick cross cuts, then you could probably just plan to run on this even if you had someone else running the other stall and for some reason your cabin was still burning 1500 watts or less running an air conditioner. So it's very surprising the kind of surge capacity that has. And remember, this is half of the power of the six kilowatt that we demonstrated earlier on this year. So um, we're just going to go ahead and start a dryer load. Now we just about maxed out one of them, but that's going to kind of climb down. So dryers are typically six to seven thousand watts. This one's on the six thousand side. We're maxing this inverter unit out and this one's at 91%. And the reason why there's an imbalance is because of the motor and the motor load is typically being pulled from one side or the other. So if it was, you know, like a 240 volt heating element, it'd be perfectly even. The dryer's got some of that. Of course, the dryer's running right now, but now we're hot. And we're just gonna run this. I mean, at 100% until we run out of juice with the batteries. And uh, we'll, do, uh, we'll let you know if there's any overloads as we join through 15 kilowatts. I mean, Right now our load is effectively five kilowatts, five and a half, six kilowatts if you figure in efficiencies. 
So we should last, you know, two and a half hours. We'll have to probably start this a couple times. And uh, we'll show you at the end of the video of how that's worked out with the battery strike. Okay, guys, this dryer's still running. This is the second load of laundry that we're doing. As you can see, the batteries are just about out. I think uh, this one, the run light's just flashing very slowly. Same story, same story. We'll probably be out of power in no time. The inverters show 48.4, that's just about squat. To keep this thing running as long as we could, we took a dirty towel and we filled it with uh, water. But now it's nice and dry, thanks to renewable energy. And of course the dryer is this low we use because it uses as much as an, as an air conditioner, but it's a little more convenient to, you know, run here. I don't want to set up a 510 air conditioner. And we turn that off and the battery voltage is a little higher now. Batteries are always lower voltage when they're under load. But that's it, you know, that's, uh, that's two hours constant at 100% load. I mean, frankly, this isn't unrealistic if, even if you wanted to have a cabin in the woods and have an electric dryer, it's not unrealistic to kind of figure you can get this kind of performance.